G'day Bomber fans, hope you enjoyed the week. Another good solid win for the club under the belt, but now we face a real test. Our first real test of the season. This is a big game, Essendon vs St Kilda under Saturday Night Lights for their anniversary clash. We have a real chance here to stamp them out and go 3-0, and zero, but the Saints look to be a really good footy side this year. Before I get into the preview, here is the vote count for our Player of the Year award. Another great voting turnout from you guys. Here are your votes on the right and mine on the left, showing how similar we are. Well done guys. I should note uh, BZT was very close behind Redmond in the overall tally. I think he was pipped by like three votes in the end. It means we have a bunch of different players in the running early after just two rounds of footy. Make sure you keep getting your votes in after every match review. They release every Monday, so subscribe to stay up to date with that. So we take on a fired up St Kilda who are being coached to perfection by Ross the Boss right now. If you look at their current fit playing list, you would think that they are nowhere near a chance to beat Frio or the Dogs, but they did, and they did so comfortably. It's been a really impressive showing, and it's based off the back of a pressure rise. I've watched both of their games. They gave the Dogs no room early in that match, and they were ferocious against the Dockers in round one as well. And what it means is once the opposition gets used to the hot footy, they begin to be impacted by perceived pressure. We saw it a lot, players rushing their kicks when they didn't need to. It's all off the back of that early St Kilda pressure, so we know exactly what to expect, especially in an anniversary celebration game. This is an issue because our game is built upon scoring from intercept possessions. We rely on quick electric footy out of defence, which means we have to deal with their forward half pressure if we want to score. I don't think we will see the big score lines we have been providing in recent weeks, but the good news is I doubt they can kick one either right now. Their forward line has been decimated by injury. They are being led by Michito Owens without Tim Membry and Max King. I don't even know who's leading the line up there, but they also lost their captain against the Dogs as well. They will be without Jack Steele, which means our midfield has the upper hand as well. We are fully fit in the engine room, touch wood, and we should have Sam Wiedemann and Jake Stringer returning to the team, probably at the expense of Alan Davy Jr. And honestly, I don't even know who comes out after that. Maybe Heppel? Maybe because that Saints forward line is so undersized, we just take out the injured BZT and replace him with forward firepower. It's hard to judge at the moment. But with those inclusions and their players missing, you should look at both these teams and safely say, we look better on paper. But paper doesn't mean anything this year. North are 2-0, and zero, the Dogs are 0-2. and two. This will be a coaching battle. The Saints trying to strangle us through pressure and us trying to navigate our way around that. I think it's all about how the game will look. If it is played under their circumstance, it's a win for them, vice versa for us. It's almost a positive for us in a way because it begs the question, can St Kilda do this three weeks in a row? Are they the real deal for a finals push? This could either be a statement win, a we mean business win for the club, or it could deflate them. And the same goes for us. If we win this, we start to think maybe finals is on the cards. If we lose, I think we can safely rule out the chances, especially with so many teams in contention. It looks like a real logjam of a year up on the ladder. Early form is crucial for a finals push. you got to win your first few games for momentum. It's what plagued us in 2018. If we win this, I strongly believe we will go 4-0 and zero with GWS the week after. And once that happens, you got to say we are in line for the 8. That is why I think this is a must-win game for both teams' finals chances. I really think the result puts our season one of two ways. Same goes for them. So both teams will come out fighting. It could be an exhausting slog of a match, especially with their pressure. There are some big matchups to be wary of. Their small forward line is pretty annoying, and we are pretty tall down there, depending on what happens with BZT and his likely replacement. We have very attacking defenders like McGrath, Redman, and Massimo, who will need to be more accountable against a smaller, zippier forward line. I am sure Hind will be close to joining the team after his impressive VFL display. I will get to the other good contributors later. They are also really attacking out of defense, thanks to Jack Sinclair. He is a player we need to monitor closely. Him and Hill are really good movers of the footy, so players like Menzi and whoever is joining him out of Guelphie and Davey need to be very defensive, which is why I think Guelphie is the more likely option. I think he could almost play a, a role on, on Sinclair or a similar type of player. Rowan Marshall is also going to be an interesting one to watch. Him versus Draper will be an engaging battle, seeing who gets on top there. And when Draper is resting, Phillips, who is less dynamic and mobile, just needs to keep him quiet, something I, I trust him to do. He is a good role-playing ruck. And while we're talking about certain players, I should talk about the VFL to see who could likely come into the side. There were a few that impressed. Hobbs was everywhere. He had a couple of goals and over 30 touches. Nick Hind had over 40 disposals out of defence. Stringer was good on limited minutes. And Kane Baldwin was also superb. He is in line for a defensive debut if we decide to go like for like with BZT if he is out of the side this week. Although, like I said, that Saints forward line is very undersized. I think unlike the last two games, it's hard to know what is going to happen here. It's hard to even know how it will be played at times. It will be hot, but it's all about how we 
deal with the heat. The Saints truly have the upper hand system-wise, on face value that is. It's all about how we handle their game style. Are we mature enough and well-drilled enough to deal with the pressure? I want you guys to let me know down below how you think this game will end up. I'm going to predict us by eight points very hesitantly. This is a pure 50-50 going into the game in my eyes. We are going to learn a lot about both clubs by the end of the fourth quarter. It will show us how far we are off the rest of the comp. A win would absolutely be massive for our season and for morale amongst the fans. So that is that. That is my round three preview. Enjoy the game. It's Saturday night, prime time at the G. Make sure you also tune into my match review on Monday morning as well. See you till then, Bomber fans.